everyone and welcome to another episode of How To with the Caribbean Gaffer powered by 13 Degrees North Rentals. And today we are going to jump straight back into it because it's another episode of one of my absolute loves sound. And I have back with me again, Travis Springer. And today we are going to be looking at how to fix your audio issues before and on set and the fundamental tools that you may need. Um, now Travis, we all know me and Barbados. Of course. We've heard it a million times over yep. and over the wind noise. Correct. The I need to go and capture this shot quickly. I don't have or I only have a on camera mic or I have a lav, but I go in the middle of a a field. A field, correct. Yeah. And then you get back in and all you hear is <sighs> wind. Wind. Great, amazing, beautiful Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> so how how do we help the 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 young people to fix that issue? Um well you know last last episode we talked about uh location scoring. Mm -hmm. And uh if you had the opportunity to do location score and you realize oh this is windy, um then you need to consider wind protection. I mean, it may sound obvious, but for a lot of people, they don't understand what wind protection is. So, so um, usually we have um, people would have a, a on camera mic on top of their uh, their camera, or they may have a, a shotgun microphone like this, and it usually comes with a foam. This foam is pretty much useless anywhere outdoors, especially in Barbados. Um, they, they don't consider that you're going to have a lot of wind problems, and so they always sell you on an accessories, of course. Right. Um, so for instances like this, the, the easiest thing to do is get uh, wind protection, as we said. So there are different types of wind protection that offer different varying lengths of um, protection from the wind. Um, so this is an upgrade. This is a slip-on. You can get them in different brands, different shapes, colors, sizes, um, but this will help your sound i would say 90 percent of you know of the, way. of the way yeah yeah um obviously there are different scenarios if you're shooting on a cliff and the, the breeze is way more intense then you may want to opt for something bigger um like a, a blink uh, which obviously the more you put over a mic the you know you affect certain frequencies and characteristics of right of course. exactly but um but it it will help in terms of your way to get the cleanest sound possible right so so just to be clear mm -hmm. so this is for less windy Correct. noise environment where a blimp and the dead cat now um in combination would be for Correct. windier yeah. environment Correct. um no for for the people who don't know um Generally, when, as Travis said, generally the more stuff that you put over a mic, the more your frequency responses change. Right. And then you then have to look also at the type of microphone that you're going to be using within the blip or within just a dead cat. Um, because different microphones have different frequency responses right. too as well. I generally like to get stuff right on set. The first time. <laughs> the yeah. first time and not have to go to post, but using, so for example, well, if you have only this level of wind protection and you do end up in a windy situation, um, it is possible to reduce the wind noise or the wind level um, in post as well, right? Um, and in some instances, depending on what you are recording on, you may have a lower cut filter um, that you can apply. And some microphones actually do have the low cut filter on it. Um, it is, it is, it's, it looks like the, 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 the coat, not the coat thing. Um, <laughs> um, square root yeah. sign. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like, it looks like the, the, the square root sign. So you can, you can apply that on your microphone. If your microphone does have that, that sign and it's right here. Right, um, it literally it is the frequency, and then it cuts off the the bottom end. Now, obviously, with wind noise, you will your your wind noise and your wind frequencies generally affect the lower the lower frequency, the lower frequency, yeah. the lower frequency range right. or lower frequency yeah. scale. Um, so it is that that you want to Sorry. stop um, at the source. Yeah. 
and it is, it is good to do it from the microphone, but then with added protection, it is even better. And bear in mind too, when, when you add these low cuts, you're, you're affecting the sound in general, because you're, you're, you're actually cutting off the low frequencies, you know? Correct. Um, so you keep that in mind if you require a bassier actor, uh, actress, you know, who has lower frequencies, that's the, tone, the tonality of your voice. Right. Um, but it's just good to keep that stuff in mind uh, when using low cuts. Yeah, agreed. So now, not only then um, are you cutting, or you will have the, 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 the lower cut to cut down the the lower end or the lower frequencies of your wind noise, but we could then go into explaining how the dead cats and actually work in terms of wind reduction. Um, Travis, you could take sure. that away. So um, on the most basic, um, you know, at the most basic level, um, the microphone usually comes with a little capsule at the top, which doesn't really do much. Um, the foam would obviously pass um, more wind um, easier through, but it will give you the best fidelity mm -hmm. in terms of picking up sound, right? Um, when you start getting to more thicker, thicker um, wind protection, um, as I said, it will start to cut off the high frequencies first, but essentially what this does is once the wind goes through, it dissipates, it breaks up because that's why we have all this fur. Correct. 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 You know, and the same thing applies, the, the thicker fur you get. Um, with these bigger wind jammers, we actually have a shell um, on the inside of them. Um, let me see if I can do this quickly, but they would usually have like a, a membrane on the inside, which will help cut down wind as well. So the mic goes into here. Um, sometimes you don't even need this, um, but this is obviously added protection. And the more you add, this works the same way as this, where the wind goes in, it dissipates. It dissipates because um, of the fur. And if it does get through this, it still has to go through this before it gets to the right. mic. And the membrane is also done like this to also help dissipate the, the, the wind that, that is coming Correct. in as well. So, so the more dissipation or the more fabrics or more substances that you have, that the wind has to actually pass through, it just filters it out. Instead right. of it based being one force of wind hitting the microphone, right. as it reaches this, then it, it literally has to dissipate. Right. So that's how you, that's how these actually work. Now, if we move from the shotgun mics now and we move to the labs, like what Travis and I are wearing and what you're hearing, um, it gets, same concept, but on a smaller level. On a smaller scale. Yeah. You could hold man. Yeah, yeah. Um, essentially, it works the same way. You know, um, all of these labs work just like the shotguns, where the best sound is the naked lab, like what we're doing now. But of course, we have situations with wind. So on a very, very miniature scale, we have these little fuzzies. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, do the same job, but obviously they're not as effective because they're tiny. They're tiny. You know? Correct. And um, bear in mind, these have to go on the people's clothes as well. Um, so the bigger you make it, the obviously more uncomfortable, the more pronounced it would look. Correct. Um, so sometimes the lab isn't always the best choice for wind. That's why we love close-ups, so that we can get the, the bigger wind protection in. But these would work in a, in a, in a pitch for those young aspiring filmmakers, cinematographers. And that only can afford a lab kit. Correct. Then, um, then, then you, you will go and purchase the the, the, the overcover. Correct. Um, so, so yeah, so these are actually called overcovers. Mm -hmm. And then there is a next type that, that is called undercover Correct. as well. Um, you have it? Um, I might have some undercover. So, so the overcover obviously is a lot thicker than, than, than an undercover would be. Um, an undercover is just very thin. You can see the, the difference in, in terms of thickness of the two right. materials. So overcover, thicker, undercover, very thin. Now with that said, we could go into shirt noise and, and, and close Russell. That, 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 that is made and not Jason Russell. We're talking about Russell from yeah, Russell the clothing. Big up to Jason. <laughs> he, was, he was in season two. Um, so yes, Travis, so when, when we are watching productions and then you hear a lot of clothing start rustling like, like, like this, and this is me deliberately moving my microphone, but, but, you, do get the, but you do get the noise happening um, at some points in time. Right. Oh, what's your advice to people to, to stop 
that that, the, that level the, of the, noise. Yeah, so there are a couple of different techniques we can do. Um, first of all, different fabrics react different to to the, the sensitivity of the sure. microphone, right? So you find silks are very noisy. Um, if people are wearing jackets, you know, when you're moving a jacket, you hear the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. You can't really get you can't really get rid of. Um, you can limit the movement of the actors for sure. But essentially, what uh, we look to do is find the mic in a pocket of air. So, you know, which could be the natural cleavage of a man or a woman, mm -hmm. um, where the mic wouldn't be rubbing against any clothes. Right. Um, there is other, if, if you have no choice, if you put it in between two buttons and you find you're getting a lot of rubbing, you can um, you can use different mounts on, on the, the actual capsule. They sell different mounts per, per lab. Right. That would help as well. Or you could use um, some tape because obviously the vibrations pass through the cable. So um, many people would put a small loop and they would use like medical tape, you know, to tape it so the vibrations are less going on the cable to right, the transmitter. Right. Um, there's lots of different smaller techniques to cut it down. Um, but generally speaking, finding a pocket of air naturally. So if, if the shirt is naturally um, falling, like a t-shirt for example, try to put it where it's not directly touching the skin. Right. Or if you put it on the person's skin, which you may have to um, for aesthetic purposes, so you don't see the cable or a lav, Natural air, like the cleavage of a man or woman, works pretty well. Right. And when he says cleavage, he's talking about right in the center, right here. Correct. Where, where, where between your chest will have a natural pocket, and between the the breasts or, or the cleavage of a lady Correct. will will have a natural pocket as well. Um, for me, when I used to do sound, I had a, a lot of techniques that, that I used to like to employ, like putting a microphone between um, some lamb skin with some tape, some tape just yeah. just layering it um, one at the front one at the back and the microphone in right. between or sometimes that didn't used to be available sorry sometimes that wasn't available so i literally used to use plaster yeah i mean it works it's, um, it's the material to help cut mold any of the rock correct. um some mold skin as they call it um uh, i'm not sure if i have any here to show you guys but mm -hmm. but yeah so it's just different techniques you can use right. to anything you can do to help cut down cut down the the, the wrestling the wrestling of, of the, um, Right, and then um, I learned the technique once. Um, I actually cut off the top of a pen and put and the put and in, put the yes, microphone, trade the microphone yeah, 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 right yeah. up through, and then clip put it, it clip it on. Yeah, and uh, that gives or, you amazing. So people even put it through a button. You know, if you have some yeah. of those tiny, tiny capsules, uh, lots of shows have them hidden in plain sight. Um, tie knot. Is yeah, I was I was about to well. talk about the tie knot. I, yeah. I I actually love that 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 technique. For me, that's one of my absolute favorite making techniques to, to put the mic inside the tie. I absolutely it, love it, that. It works wonders. Um, Correct. People generally don't look up the tie for the mic. Sometimes you can even see it on a lot of network TV because it's generally not someplace people would look. So a lot of times you can get them hiding the mic in plain sight, as you Correct. said, in the pen, in the tie knot, in the button. Um, so just all of these techniques help to reduce the rustle and inherent noise you get from clothing. Yeah. So there you go. That's another how-to. Um, small little techniques, small little tips and tricks for you. Now, for some people, um, there's there there. I've encountered situations where people hear RF noise or the microphone itself is 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 intermittent, right. or or in some instances, if the microphone loses RF, it, you get a, a a squealing sound, and some people refer to it as feedback. But then I have to look at them and tell them, no, that is not feedback. That, that, that is RF, right? Which, which, is, which is the radio frequency interference. Now, um, from your experience, how best to, to deal with, with RF? With RF? Um, well, I don't know if everyone knows what RF is, but um, in terms of wireless, RF is the radio frequencies that uh, you know, transmit over the air. Over the air. Right? Let's, let's make that simple. Um, when it comes to RF, the first thing you have to consider is distance. Yeah. Right. Um, how much power can your transmitter um, output before it gets to the receiver? Obviously, there's a maximum distance, and once you cross that threshold, it starts to cut out, as yeah. the agents would say. You cut know, out. Correct. Cut or, out. Or you get interference. Or you get interference. <laughs> right. So distance is one of the, the main factors we would consider. Is is it too far? You get closer. You get closer to the subject. Sometimes on massive wide shots, um, you can't help it. You can try to run the, the transmitter closer, um, or use some antennas. Um, one of the other issues is um, just the actual frequency you're using. Correct. You know, so on set at the top of the day, when you have time, you can do a frequency scan. Uh, most 
prosumer and professional transmitters and receivers, you can scan the frequency mm -hmm. to see what's available, what's free. Um, so do a quick scan, find one of the empty frequencies. Sometimes these transmitters do it for you automatically, and, um, but you have to do it. And then that would obviously help with um, interference with other possible you know, uh, devices in the area that's using RF. Right. Well. Um, also too, another thing is uh, where, where the transmitter is on the person. You know, as we as we know, the higher people put antennas on their roof, yeah, because it's it's higher and you know the signal reaches are further. Um, so it, the lower you put the the transmitter on a on a body, for example, um, the obviously the less range it will the have. The less range, any more any more obstructions it Correct. will have to, to to go through. Correct. Um, agreed. Now another another tip, um, and this doesn't only relate to on set but i've seen this in other scenarios as well and that is having more than one transmitter going going to a receiver so you may have a microphone that that is the same frequency Correct. as a lab and if both of them are on at the same time sometimes you get serious cancellation and rf issues Correct. so that's another thing that you have to be mindful of not having these two microphones on the same frequency go into one receiver. receiver. You can have more than one receiver picking up from one transmitter that works perfectly well. Um, in multiple situations, you may have more than one sound record there or record this yes. um, on, on, on site. And so um, on the most basic, um, you know, at the most basic level, um, the microphone usually comes with a little capsule at the top, which doesn't really do much. Um, the foam, would obviously pass um, more wind um, easier through, but it will give you the best fidelity mm -hmm. in terms of picking up sound, right? Um, when you start getting to more thicker, thicker um, wind protection, um, as I said, it will start to cut off the high frequencies first, but essentially what this does is once the wind goes through, it dissipates, it breaks up. Because that's why we have all this fur. Fur, correct. correct. You know, and the same thing applies, the, the thicker fur you get. Um, with these bigger wind jammers, we actually have a shell um, on the inside of them. Um, let me see if I can do this quickly, but they would usually have like a, a membrane on the inside, which will help cut down wind as well. So the mic goes into here. Um, sometimes you don't even need this, um, but this is obviously added protection. And the more you add, this works the same way as this, where the wind goes in, it dissipates. It dissipates because um, of the fur. And if it does get through this, it still has to go through this before it gets to the right. mic. External power and external antennas would help in that scenario Correct. as well. Um, also to note too, the um, RF doesn't transmit through water. Uh, and humans are, as we know, a body of a water. A body of water. So you can get issues with the placement of the transmitter on a human, for example. Um, uh, so it's good to know that um, we are also transmitting through water if you're putting it on the back of a person, for example. Sure. And I mean, it's usually not the case because we can output a pretty decent amount of power, but sometimes even moving the transmitter to a, pocket, a left side, a left side or a left side, side, or right, right side, side yeah. makes a huge, huge difference. Huge difference. Correct. Um, actually, now you're talking about positioning. Um, let's look at hiding.